names. This isn't the first time we've done this, but there's so much new. We decided we needed to do it again. Do it again, yes. And we'll. Uh, this is part of the Student Manager 101 Boot Camp Series. I know we have a lot of people watching who have been with Manager forever, but uh, we'll give you some of the new and improved. So let's jump right into it. We're going to kind of do a review. So some of this will be old hat uh, for folks who've used it. For new people, we'll give you a kind of an orientation, inputting a name, editing a names, and some tips. So um, one of the things that great programs have in common are certainly the people. We talk about people that make it happen, the programs that they're running, and the resources they use. And they're using it smartly and effectively. And that is what we're about today is in your office, your student manager, Aceware, Aceweb, is the most powerful resource. And so we're here to help you make sure you're getting the most out of it today. We're going to start with kind of a quick tour of student manager and really kind of saying if you're a brand new newbie here, these are the three big things that you need to know. We've got the names table, we've got the course table, and we've got the registrations. Those are our holy trinity, our tree, uh, three-legged stool that keeps the system going. Now, what's new and the featured attraction of this session, since we have done two of these recently, is that we have a newly remodeled screen in the name record. And again, uh, Matthew has been working on this. We're trying to provide you more breathing room so the screens aren't so crowded. Uh, offer you a larger screen size. Note this is released in Student Manager 8 version 21 or newer. We'll have the new screen size. We've got your tools on the right hand side with the behavior. Move from the bottom. And the other big thing is that we've got the demographic screen is all organized with all the demographics in one panel, including the interest codes, callbacks, uh, so that all that information is on the same screen. So again, that's what we're going to be reviewing today. Uh, and again, that is uh, part of the new 21 release of Student Manager 8. Okay, kind of back into the general overview. You've got several ways to launch the system, uh, to get into names, courses, registrations. The quick launch bar in the center of your screen is one of the options. The other one is to use the toolbar at the top of the screen. And then you can also use, and we'll kind of go through what the tools are, faculty lookup, add edit codes, edit the preferences, help the online help guide, open the online help guide, log on a different user. Or you can use the drop down menu. Again, with shortcut keys that take you where you need to go. One of the other things to note, and again, whether you're a new user or an old user or an experienced user, we won't use old, but that there are options and preferences that you can set. So you can choose how you want that launch screen at the beginning of your program, whether you want to use center screen only, the toolbar only, use both or neither. So again, uh, this is again a preference that you are able to set up. So uh, kind of getting back now to the program, navigating the system, one of the things we always want to emphasize is that when you are done working with student manager, and again, even if you're taking lunch break, we always recommend you close the system. Go to file and choose exit or close with the X. Again, um, because you're dealing with student data and because if you're in the system, admin functions cannot be processed, do exit the student manager whenever you leave the office or are going to be off the system for an extended period of time. And generally that's more than an hour, I think, in my, my suggestion. Okay, let's kind of move across the menu. The edit bar. Clicking on edit gives you options to undo, copy, clone, paste and let you set your profile of the user preferences. And note, the undo, cut, copy only is available if you have a, a data record open inside Manager. And again, we'll kind of navigate to Student Manager, and so we're looking at the Edit menu right there. Um, the module, this is where you get your data. 
course names, courses registrations. We talked about the shortcut keys that can get you there. Reporting, all of the report areas, 84 reports, all can be modified. Tools, special tools. One of the things that's new in Student Manager 8 is that you've got a few more tools available to you right from the main menu. Import export tools, some update counts, data cleanup tools are all now part of the tools menu. And again, information about those is available in your help guide, which is through your little red book. Um, a big picture is the about student manager. And again, kind of tabbing quickly to give you an idea where that is under help about student manager is the help guide that are the uh, the system information giving you how many names are in the system courses registrations and the optional module button over here will let you see what optional modules you have in your particular version of the program again if you purchase student manager prior to 2009 most of these modules were add-ons. In other words, you buy a bare-bones system and you'd add on the elements you want. After 2009, most of the systems out had a lot of these already included. So again, check that to see if you've got modules that, um, you, should, that you should be thinking about getting if you don't have them, especially if you've been around a while. Entering names. Okay, now we're getting into what we came for, entering names in the system multiple ways to add a new name in Student Manager 8. Number one, from the menu launch bar, the plus button. From the menu itself, either uh, navigate to names, add new name, or the Alt-A shortcut. Or use the quick launch toolbar. And again, that gets you into the name record. One of the other things to note <clears throat> is that when you're in the name, you can customize your name screen. Again, whether you're a brand new user or have been using this for a long time, I recommend going into Preferences. And again, where we are with this, the Edit Preferences button gives you a menu or the choices of what you can turn on, turn off, behavior elements down here at the bottom, and the ability to repurpose screens. Uh, where anything in blue, and again, kind of remember, uh, items that are in blue are global. And again, if you go to preferences and you don't see blue, then you don't have administrator rights to the system. So if you want to turn on a field and you don't see it as, a, as an option, uh, ask your system administrator to, to uh, turn that on or why you aren't able to see that particular field. <clears throat> Black items, again, if you have the permission, those can be set on a user by user basis. So if you as a group want to use a particular field, then you either need to get with your tech about doing what's called a top dog, which is possible, you can synchronize all your settings, or tell the other users that this ought to be part of your standard operating procedure. And again, uh, while we mention standard operating procedure, there is a tool now under your student manager resources, that's kind of a model guide for setting up your own SOP manual. And again, Lori, Lori gets credit for helping to put that together. So Lori, we thank you. All right, I, uh, I normally ask this at the beginning, but if there were, to, if you've got questions, um, uh, we're, we're going through this, I'm gonna stop at the end and uh, we'll certainly have Q&A at the end, but if you've got an immediate question, shoot it to Lori. I'll take a breath from time to time and let Lori uh, toss in a question if there's one relevant to where we're at right now. So far, so good, Lori. Any any chatter going on right now? So far, so good. All right. Lori's having a thunderstorm, so as long as we still hear her and there's no big boom crash, we know she's good. So, <laughs> Okay. Back to the name record. Uh, User-defined screens. Now, again, besides the ability to repurpose fields inside the student manager preferences, you have user-defined fields that you can set up and use on the names, course, register, and instructor screens. Again, blue indicates global. Whatever you put in for a description is the same description for every user in the system. But the black indicates that 
for every different user with a login to student manager, you can set up a preference to turn that field on or off. Um, back to the name record now, we're looking at the main name screen. You'll also note there are some pink brackets in there. Those are validated data fields, but use a table link rather than the drop-down fields, which are drop-down lists. And again, the reminder that if you see a plus to the left of them means that you can add those codes on the fly. Now, again, a quick note, the access to the plus sign is a function of your ability to get to the, uh, the preferences area. So again, if you've got permission to get to preferences, then um, that would be your user setting within your, your user rights as a, as a user. All right, uh, on the name record, data validation dropdowns. Again, you'll see the fields with the dropdown arrow are validated again. Uh, and, and reminding you that what you see on your data screen or what you can get to on your data screen depends upon what you've turned on or turned off in that name preference area under, under preferences. So again, uh, there, there are lots of options in here and kind of making sure you've tuned in the dial or that you've, you've turned the lights on in that room in order for you to use it. So, all right, Lori, we doing good? We seem to be. All right, student ID number. Again, the student ID is a unique identifier for each record in the names table. Uh, Aceware will automatically generate that for you based on a seed ID. You may enter your own student ID if you're trying to correlate that to a third-party system or tying it to a campus system. Um, however, the one thing to note is that it must be nine digits long. And so what will happen is that if you don't enter all nine digits, we will automatically pad underscores to the left to make sure they are nine digits long. And again, uh, you can identify a prefix number or letter. Uh, the default is generally an X, but again, you can use different prefix letters as the lead dummy number uh, on that particular field. Special fields in the name record, and a lot of those are special, but uh, one of the options, badge name, is one that can be turned on uh, if you want to use a name for a mailing or for a name badge different than what the uh, first name would be. And if, again, if you don't need to use it for badge name or your, your customers are generally okay with using whatever is in the first name, uh, you can repurpose that. You can relabel that and use it for a different purpose. Lori, am I getting a beep? I'm afraid my battery on my ear set is about gone. Uh, I don't hear anything. Don't but. hear it. All right. Well, we'll go on here. Um, I may, I'm going to switch to the headset, so hang on a second. Okay. We're back. Can you hear me now? You got me now? We got you now. Very good. All right. So we're operating off of uh, the old phone now. Other special fields. Don't mail field. Again, if you've got a, a bad address or one of the options here for the don't mail field is if you have multiple family members and you might want to mark don't mail on the, uh, the, the, the spouse who's not the main contact or the children that are part of this family unit so that when you're doing mass mailings, uh, you don't mail four emails to the same exact address. Uh, and again, there is a similar field on the email, although that's more of the spam option that if you've got a student who says, well, I'll take your emails about information in my course, but don't send me those advertising emails. And so there's your opt-out option for the uh, people uh, who might not want to get your, your pretty promotional emails. Um, SMS messaging, brand new option with Student Manager 8 uh, is that you now are able to, and it does require some subscription to a third party email messaging system, uh, but you can send SMS messaging for class announcements, emergency notices, short bits of information, 140 characters or less, tweet size, um, to your students. 
And again, um, that is an option. It's no additional cost from Aceware. I think it is like three-fourths of a penny from this third-party source uh, in order to send an SMS message. Okay, uh, source code. Uh, this is a big one, in my opinion, that you'll want to try to find out is how did that name get into the database? You want to know what marketing efforts are generating your registrations. And so that source code is a very important tool for your marketing people. Uh, interest codes, and again, you'll note here on the demographics page, and I'll kind of roll back to that here, that when you're on the name record, that you've got your main page and the demographics page then has all of the demographics now, including the interest codes. So your interest codes indicate what classes or what subjects or topics your students might be interested in. And again, if you put a subject code in the course record, that subject code will automatically be stamped to the name's interest code. A couple of notes here is that there is no limit to the number of interest codes. Actually, there is. It is 36 to the 10th power, or is it 10 to the 36th power, which is basically 10 digits and 36 letters in the alphabet. So you've got quite a few options as to how many interest codes you assign. Um, powerful tool for marketing and program management. Have as many as you want. You can scope it by area. You can edit it. So again, you can remove it. You can actually edit the date stamp on there. Whenever you add an interest code, uh, whether it's automatic or manually added, it puts a date stamp on. So you know when that student expressed an interest in a particular topic. Again, very, very important, I think, and useful tool. Other special fields, occupation field, organization field. Again, if you're doing business and professional or workforce training, those might be more critical than if you're doing more enrichment or fun and recreation type courses. But again, if that's the case, you can repurpose them. Again, you can relabel these fields and use them for other purposes. Uh, memberships, um, again, just talked to an OSHA program this morning. If you have an OLLI program or any kind of membership-based program, there is an integrated tool to track memberships, expiration dates on memberships, and controlling access to classes or offering membership discounts to classes. And again, there is a special webinar on that under Webinar Archive, in the Webinar Archive area of the Student Manager Customer Res or the ACEWARE Customer Resources. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll note there are is a kind of a, a dashboard that tells you information about the student, when the student was, record was added, who added it, uh, who was the one that updated it, when was the last date updated, is there a balance due or is there a credit balance? Um, saving your work, the toolbar on the right-hand side. One of the things to note, and I know a lot of customers for years will always, they'll be working in the record, they'll hit the save button, and then they'll hit OK close. You don't have to do that. Any button you hit on this screen, except undo, abandon, or escape will save your edits. So if you're in a name record and you wanted to go find a new name, or you're in a name record and you wanted to hit edit their registration, it will automatically save any work you have done on that name record. So again, what the differences are, when you hit the save button, it will force a write of any changes and the name screen stays open. Uh, if you hit save at the bottom it, or hit OK close, it saves any changes, but it closes the screen. So that's kind of the big difference. You don't have to do both of them. Uh, again, undo. The undo option is that if you have not hit save or you've not hit any one of these other buttons, it will undo the changes you've done. Um, and again, but leave you in the screen, the, the name screen stays open, abandon will abandon the changes and close the screen. So that's kind of your quick navigation with that. And again, reminder, you don't have to hit save before an OK close. 
finding the names. Once you're on a name record and you want to locate another name, again, you do not have to close and go back to the Find menu. Just hit the Find button right from the name screen. That will take you back into the Find routine. The other option that you've got as you're navigating names is that you can skip forward and backward on the names table sorted alphabetically. And again, you've got options. And we're going to roll we're going to roll to the name record for that. So that if you're on the name record here now and we want to look alphabetically forward and backwards, we're at Jeff Brown and we go forward, we go to Bush, we go to Butterfield, we go to Call, Clinton, Clinton again. So you got the point there is that you can navigate forward and backward within the system. Now, you can change that sort order uh, by firm name if you're doing business tracking, by home phone, by social, by zip code, by email. Uh, so again, you've got options as to how you navigate through the names once you have a name record up and open. So find the find menu in 8. And again, for those of you who haven't yet moved to 8, the new find system really gives you a lot more options and kind of like immediate options. So you have one data form to enter and it'll match any letter combination on any one of 14 fields in the screen. <clears throat> You'll note that the columns, if you're looking at the columns, any column by clicking on the column header, you can sort all of the people in that list by that column. And you'll see the up down arrow. If you click once, it'll sort it alphabetically descending. You click the arrow button again, and it'll click it alphabetically descending, basically alpha forward and backwards. And then finally, there is an option search on a begins with versus contains. If you're trying to do faster speed, generally leaving this checked is a faster way to search for records in the system, whether that's names or courses or anything else. Now again, if you're trying to do wildcard searches, for instance, you're searching for uh, the word university anywhere in the firm, then of course you could turn that off and it would give you the option to be able to search by keyword uh, in the firm field. Now, there is a whole webinar that we've set up on optimizing searches that is now in the help guide. <clears throat> again, for versions 8.20 and newer. Um, so again, there is a short webinar. It's, I think, 10, 15 minutes, so it's pretty quick that would give you tips on how to use the new search mode. All right, so when you're looking up a name with the internal find routine, and let me just jump before we get back to that. I'm going to jump to live for the folks who haven't been on find. So again, this is the new find screen. I'm going to do begins with, and so we type Smith. If we type Smith, S-M-I-T-H, we begin to get Smith coming up. Now, for last name, first name, just reminder, if we wanted uh, Zedediah Smith, or let's see who we have, Sam Smith rather than Bill, if you type at least two letters of the last name, a space, no comma, and the first letter of the first name, uh, it will get you uh, the, the Sam Smith. Now, we've got Sam somewhere back in the first name here. We've got a Sam showing up so that we've got Sammy in the first name of that email uh, up above. But that gets uh, the search mode for uh, the name record. All right, optimizing. If you can't find a name with find, try the F5 key. Uh, the F5 key is actually predates 8, and a lot of the things in 8 now are covered with this, but it does offer a couple of new things. You can search by elements in the address. Uh, you can search by a specific city. And you can search the comments or the history fields, those great big text note fields that you might have been putting notes in. You're able to search for that. Uh, the other thing it lets you do, and we'll talk about credentials, is search names based on a credential. So again, the F5 key is really a useful tool. Um, I think we'll probably, Lori, do a webinar on that later on this summer or early this fall because of all the things you can do with it. Uh, one of the things you'll also note 
is that it gives you a quick way to do exporting uh, to either DBF or to Excel if you're trying to pull up names uh, to do a quick export. Uh, and also to note there are other shortcut keys. If you'll just hit the F1 key, you'll see the other shortcut keys that are available within the system. I uh, want to make sure that you're aware of those. Credentials. Let's talk about credentials a bit here. This is something new. It was actually released in the latter part of 7.2.A. But what credentials allows us to do is to record other information about the name record where you need more detail than an interest code. And the examples might be test scores for work keys. Um, if you're trying to track classes that this person might have attended at another institution. If you need to track, whoa, if you need to track job placement or credentials and licensing. Again, those are all things you can do with the credential area. The new tab has a whole bunch of options now so that when you start with adding a new entry and you identify the type, you now can customize. Let me find back up one. You can now customize the labels that go on these fields and turn them, if you would, on and off. So for courses, you don't need a lot of extra detail. You can only use the elements that you want and label them so that your data entry staff will have some kind of little cheat sheet uh, to use that. So again, um, if you need to store supplemental data about your students, uh, the credential fields, the credential area is one that really is a powerful element and be happy to talk to your tech if you've got some questions about how you might effectively use that. All right, and again, the idea of customizing your data entry, it's under the add edit codes for names testing. Helpful tips. We are just p powering through this, Lori. So I'm going to stop right now and see if there are questions now. We're going to have plenty of time at the end to go over things. But any, any burning questions right now? I've not given you any airtime here. Well, I, I think we're going to hold what we have. Hold them? There. All right. So all right. I think we'll be all right. Sounds good. Well, we'll have plenty of time, so not to worry about it. Um, other information in the comments history screen. Uh, again, uh, we're, we're actually looking at the old uh, format here, but the idea that when you're in the name record, there is uh, the main screen. We talked about demographic screen. The comments history looks pretty much the same. Got a few more rows of the, of the history here. But this is where you can put in notes about the person. And again, reminder, the special needs note, anything you type in here will pop up when you access the student record. So the special needs screen, the CRM log down at the bottom will track uh, email blasts or anytime you send out a, um, a, a mailing list, you can generate a log for the CRM entry. And Alt F12 will actually let you an manually enter in a note in that particular log. Cloning a name, and this is something that's been actually in Manager for years, but uh, sometimes people forget about that, is that if you've got multiple people from the same address from either a firm or a family group, you can either pull up the clone name from the menu, from the main menu, once you have a name open, you can see clone name, Alt W, paste name, Alt V, or Whenever you add a name or edit a name, the last record that you worked on is by default pasted into, if you would, a clipboard. So kind of reiterate that. You locate the name. You either edit that name or manually clone it. You create a new blank record, or you can go to an existing record and update an address and do edit paste address. And the beauty of that is that that will automatically update the whole address for that record. And let's just do that because I just think that is so darn cool. So I'm going to look up Havlicek here. And let's say that I've got a family member, Barb, who's now going to start to go to work for Aceware Systems. <clears throat> so I, if I'm not editing this record, I can go to Edit, Clone Name, hit add for new name record. I'll put in Barbara's name, Barbara, if I could type. 
And actually, if you tab out of the first name only, if the person has the same last name, you can now paste, and it'll automatically paste everything from that previous record into this record. Now, note, it will also paste the email, and it will paste the birthday. So again, you would need to edit those for that new person. But as far as that clone paste, that is a great option, especially for you know, you've got a mom and four kids, uh, you can paste, 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 and get all those four kids in real quickly. All right, uh, the special button. Uh, the special button allows you some special shortcut features. Jump to the contact history, enter a callback date, um, being able to make an instructor, uh, make a name record uh, pasted into the instructor table. Uh, quick reports, we'll go back to that in a bit, but kind of go through the overview here. Quick reports on the name record allow you to generate a variety of reports. I think we have examples of a number 10 envelope, a fax cover sheet, a transcript, or whatever kind of name report you might want to create. And again, uh, there is a quick report option on the course register and instructor screens as well. And then Report flag. This is one that, uh, again, has been around for a long time, but I think a lot of times people forget about it. What you can do is mark a name record for a temporary label. And that's done under the uh, report flag, name flag, and the flip over to that. And we're going to go in on Barb, and uh, we're going to mark a label flag, and we're going to put in here the fall catalog. Suppose Barb called in and said, well, hey, I, I send me that fall catalog. So we're going to go ahead and put that in, Barb, put Barb's email in there. And we might have somebody else, uh, Blob, Rob Blagojevich would like to get a brochure on the uh, get out of jail, out of jail for all you Illinois folks that know Rob. Um, so he's got three or four people when you go in to run mailing labels and do print mark labels, it'll automatically give you a list of the people who you had marked with a label. And when you print that, you can reset the print label flag so that tomorrow when you've got a whole other set of names coming in saying, I want brochure X, I want brochure Y, you can use that print mark label tool to take care of those for people. Obviously, and again, go back to that, if you wanted to make sure they're on a particular list or they have a particular interest, you would want to add an interest code to them or some kind of mailing code. But for a one time off, send me something that I didn't get or I need to get, uh, that's what that print mark label is for. Callbacks, yeah, the callback feature, again, uh, the mini CRM components of Student Manager, uh, you can define a callback person and a callback date. And when you do that, when this person logs in on that date, this student's name record is going to pop up. Now, a couple of notes. Um, you may assign any user to get the callback pop-up. So directors and managers, you can assign staff to that. <laughs> For staff, you can assign your manager to make the call. If this is one of those beyond my pay grade kind of issue, put in the boss's name and uh, the date that that student wants a call back. But the, the big deal when you do that is make sure that you put in the note why it is. So I'm going to use a special button here, special button callback, it'll put in my name, I'm logged in as Chuck, and it'll put in a date automatically 10 days from today. Now you can edit that date as well if it's going to be Monday the 1st rather than the 5th, you can put in a date there. I'm going to put in today's date because I want to give you this example, Shift F2 types in today's date, and I'm going to put a note in history. I'm going to go back to special again, contact history, and it'll put in today's date, my username, I'm putting a note for me for me, Chuck, call Bill 
to do XXYYZZ. So whatever it is I'm supposed to do to Bill, you're going to put in a note in there. And then in the morning or whenever that user logs in, they will get a list of callbacks. So this would be what would show up on my screen. Here's a callback for me for Bill Aspartain. And if I look over at history, I can see by hovering over, if there's a capital M, there's notes. If it's a lowercase m, it's empty. I've got notes as to what I'm supposed to do. If I want to double click on that name, I can bring it up and actually see all the full details on that particular record. And that is a callback. Now, note again on callbacks. You have to enable callbacks. That's not by default. So under preferences, where it says callback date field, you've got to turn it on. You see over here, callback date field. And you have to have report on startup. And then you've got a setting here. How many days back do you want to be bringing up old callbacks before I clear them? So again, that callback feature is useful. You do have to, well, you can tune that to match whatever kind of uh, circumstances you've got within the office there. And again, it is available for faculty also and for course notes. All right, Lori, anything popping there? We, we got people together so far, so good? Uh, the capital letter on the M and the lowercase mm -hmm. letter on the M in mm -hmm. memo. Can you mm -hmm. go back to that for a moment? Sure, hang on a second. Well, the idea is that what you want to, what, what it allows you to do be, is that if you're looking at a view, this is called a memo field. And when you're looking at it in kind of a list view, all it shows is memo. If there is a capital M, there is data inside of it. If it's a lowercase m, it's blank. That's the lowercase versus uppercase on the memo. Now, when we're on the name record, the history, this is the history note. And it has data in, and it's capital M. This is the comments, and there's nothing in the, in the comments note. Uh, so it's a lowercase m. But that's just kind of a convention so that if you're looking at memos with a lowercase or uppercase, you'll know one has data, the other one does not. All right? Very nice. And can you also go back to the preferences and show where to set those for the callbacks? Uh, set for the callbacks. Um, slowing back again under edit preferences, under names. There is the callback date field, which you need to turn on to have it show on the screen. Uh, you can choose to have it reported when you start up your student manager, which is generally you're going to want to do. And then you have an option as to how many days it will go through and look for old callbacks before they, they drop off the list. And that has to do with if you're going to be or if the person you're wanting to have make the callback is going to be out of the office for three or four days, uh, you'd want to try to make sure that you've got somewhere between seven to 14 days that it checks for these callbacks so that you don't uh, miss one that, if you would, falls through the cracks because you've been off sick for four or five days. All right? Very good. Thank you. Uh, all right. So uh, going through the callbacks, features on the names. Copy name, Alt and the three key. Um, one of the new, one of the things that is really cool, and I use this a lot, is that when you're working with uh, a name record in Manager, and you say, well, I'd like to put that name in a uh, in an email header, or I want to send that name and address to somebody. If you hold the Alt key and press the three it will actually copy that name to a clipboard. And I'm just going to use comments. And I'm going to paste Alt-V. It'll paste the full name, email, and phone number. <clears throat> and you can paste that into a Word doc. You can paste that into an email body and be able to uh, you know, get a quick information drop on a person. Now, that also is available on courses. So if you want to gather some base information about a course, you go to the course, Alt 3, open up comments, and we'll just get in here, paste it in, and it'll paste in core data, title, time, kind of like a mini web view, registration fee, location, 
so it gives you a quick copy clone or copy to clipboard option <clears throat> for uh, a particular course. So, all right. Uh, so that is available again for course, uh, instructor, and the firm record. This all three will will copy that data into uh, the clipboard, which you can then paste into anything that you want to paste to. Uh, emailing from the student record. If you have the email module enabled, you can double click on the email address, pop up a quick point to point email uh, with the ability to um, copy yourself, send an attachment. You also have an option if you have AceWeb and you've got users who are calling in and they can't remember their password. Uh, there are a couple options that you can send a password reset link via student manager to the student, or you can clear their old password if it's long and forgotten and they don't know what it is anyway, and let give them the default password that uh, you and your tech should be able to identify. And uh, if you don't know what it is, check with your tech, they'll tell you. Uh, but there's a default password uh, for a student to log in for the first time if they've never logged in or you've cleared their old password. So the lost password reset. Multiple email addresses you can separate with commas. I don't know that you need a space, but you need a comma, and then you could have email address one. Technically, you could probably put uh, maybe three. I think you've got 75 characters in the email line to, to work with. Name grouping. Uh, again, I don't know. We should have a show of hands. I'm just kind of curious, Lori. Bring, bring, we're going to do a quick show of hands here. If you would drop down, drop down the... Uh, the hands for people. Raise your hand if you guys have used name grouping on the name records. And I want to see what you're doing out there. Raise your hand if you have ever used name grouping. And I'm looking, looking. Danielle, uh, Nashville has. Who, anybody else? And again, um, if you're doing, uh, Laura has. Okay, we've got a few. But the point of the name grouping is that it allows you to identify family groups or affinity groups uh, to kind of let people know that they are connected at the hip. So Bill and Hillary and Chelsea and Chelsea's husband and their little granddaughter, they could all make a little family grouping here for the Clintons uh, to indicate these are all kind of part of this one family group. <laughs> so again, uh, that gives you an ability to kind of indicate that these people are connected at the hip in some way. Combining names, uh, good twin, evil twin, again, with the ID number combine, uh, you just copy the ID number from the good twin, paste it over the ID number of the evil twin, and follow the on-screen prompts. Now, for those of you that are doing, that have names you need to combine, and you have the ID format, you'll note my ID format does not have dashes in. If you are not putting in real social security numbers in that ID field, I'm going to suggest, I'm going to suggest strongly that what you need to do is go to preferences. I'm in my demo now. Go to org defaults. And right here where you're, where you're looking at the uh, colors and all, to turn that from the USA social format to open text. And the point of that is that then if you've got two names that you need to combine, Lisa Avery, we've got a good twin, evil twin. And so we say Lisa Avery here is a good twin. And the next record, uh, blah, 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 here, Lisa Avery here is the evil twin. We go to the good twin. I'm going to copy their name. Go to the evil twin. Paste that, paste it over, and then when you do that, things happen. Is it all right to change the number? Let me clear my drawings. Is it all right to change the number? Yes. It says it has been assigned. What do we want to do? Edit, re-enter, combine the names. We want to combine them. If you continue, all registrations, yada, yada, will move to the other name, and this name is pushed over the cliff. Yep, let's do it. So we've automatically now cleared up, and there is only one Avery now. We've gotten rid of the evil twin. 
So again, that the not having the dashes in allows you to copy paste without having to worry about the cutting out the dashes. All right, I think we've got that. And we're we've busted our way through. And again, at the end, and I want to make sure you've got help. Most everything I have talked about, you can go to the online help guide, which I should have up here, and you could go to the online help guide, search for it navigate through the topics, and be able to find the information that you're looking for. So, Lori, we've got time for questions. What say people out there? People are wondering about the best way to handle international students. International students. Um, a couple of things about international students. Number one, in the help guide, um, and we don't have that on there. That's one of the elements we don't have. When you're entering an international student, one of the options that we've got, and actually this is new in 22. I'm going to actually go here. I have not tested this, honestly. We'll check that. But is the use province field. Now, uh, I think we've got that working now. When you turn on use province, what that should do is give you a address, city, state, zip, or you can have a province field over here at the right. So if you've got, you can actually, if you've got somebody from an international address, you could put in the city and it Montreal, actually lets Quebec. you edit. Pardon? Montreal, Quebec. Yeah, well, now actually, you can you can look up Canadian zip codes with the zip code lookup. So we could put in the zip postal code for Canada and put in the Montreal, Quebec, because it actually fits with the city two-digit province. Quebec would be QC. Um, I don't have one probably in my demo. Oh, maybe uh, I don't think I've got a Canadian zip code in here. Um, but that what it does now with the province field turned on, you'll note that the city and the state you can actually type in. So if we were to say Paris, France, we say Paris, and we're going to put in uh, the country, Paris, France, and zip out that. So we can put in, uh, and I'm trying to think, Paris you know, whatever the code is for that particular part of the city. So again, turning on the province option is one way to do that. Um, the other way to do that, and that's brand new, this brand new feature. I'm going to turn province off because the other option is, and this is where I've got to remember, is that normally when you're tabbing through, you never get to the city, state, and zip. You only type in the zip code. Alt and the letter O, I think. Alt O. Nope, that's not it. Alt zero. I need maybe a control O. Yeah, control O. If that control and the letter O opens up, maybe that's it. Control O opens up the city and the state field so I can actually edit the city and the state. So again, I could put in uh, Raul Pindi. Raw Pindi and no state, and we're not going to worry about the zip code. India. Whoa, that's a county. And we're going to put India here. So I can put in Raw Pindi in India and not put in a city and a zip, or a state and a zip. So that is control. Let me, let me write that down for you here. Control plus the letter O. That's the letter O. Control O will open up the city and the state field to editing. So again, two options, Control O, which actually should be good even if you're not on Student Manager 8. I believe that goes back to 7.2. Um, if you're running Student Manager 21 or greater, you've got the option now of doing the preference of turning on the province field and actually being able to have a, a province field for data entry. Now it says it disables city and zip codes. It actually 
still keeps them live, I believe, but there's a large province field that is also available. So you can you can have both U.S. addresses and um, you have a big province field to be able to use for international addresses. All right, so hopefully that gives you a couple options there. What else you got? This is almost more of a report question, but I'm thinking a lot of people have it. What's the best way to put a period after the middle initial on a certificate? Uh, that would be a report question, and again, if you, um, um, yeah, that's you can add a, um, a a if statement in a report to do that. <clears throat> that would be one. Uh, if uh, I'd be happy to send them a, an example on that afterwards. So, okay. but yeah, being able to add a period. I don't know whether nice nice name. Hang on a second. Whether nice name allows you to do that, and while we're while we're here before people leave us, want to remind you that we do have a webinar coming up in a couple of weeks featuring our guest presenter, Brittany Thomason, who was a an ACE awardee this last year from Auburn Montgomery, talking about ACE web multiple interfaces. So again, if you're curious about that, tune in in a couple of weeks. Let me get back to manager here. I I I I'll I'll follow up with the question about adding a period, but yeah, there is a way to do that. I'll I'm not sure whether or not the uh, the namer will give you that or not. <clears throat> so let's go to the next question, and I'll do some searching while we're while we're doing that. Well, I had kind of held that question till the very last, and I wasn't even sure I was going to throw it at you, but I thought, well, yeah. we've got a little bit of time. So okay, well, I'm trying to think with report maybe. functions. Uh, the namer the namer function is one that I was trying to remember if that had um, an automatic period or, or not. Let's see, name ID it puts in uh, last suffix without pun uh, punctuation. Let's just try that here. The I, namer I function the first, and and again, Lori, go ahead. I, I think the first and second one, the zero, one, and two options. We'll do that. Right. Well, let's take a look at that and just put it in in a, in a quick report. We'll pull up a name record. Uh, William J. N. Aspartame. We're going to save that. We're going to go to Quick Reports, modify the report. Uh, well, there it is. Uh, <laughs> there's a name or function. You'll see it's got a period. <clears throat> it's got a period after the N there. So uh, it just proves I didn't turn on modify. Let's let's get modify going. So yeah, this is namer. Uh, the namer function with option one, uh, it will add a period to the um, to the middle initial. So uh, there's your answer. It is the name. Just use the namer function. Uh, again, you can choose what data elements you want to print on there, uh, and it will put your period in. So right there. If I can zoom in on, I guess you can't zoom in on that. 100%. Get in there now. You can see that period right there. Right there. All right, Lori, any other questions? We've had a good good discussion here. I think that's about it. All right, again, uh, th I can't believe it went that quickly. <laughs> we we well, I was kind of pressing the metal and appreciate everybody kind of paying attention. Um, again, reiterating the fact that you've got help in the help guide and again, that we'll see you in 2 weeks uh, from tomorrow, I think it is, isn't it? Uh, for our using multiple interfaces. So Thanks much, everybody, for showing up. Hope your weather stays good. And for, for folks uh, down in Houston, let's, ho let's hope the rain stops. So, All right, Lori, have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.